I'm going to stand up here because we're, uh, we're going to record this through our live stream system and then put it out later. It's not live just because it doesn't feel like the kind of video that needs to be live, but uh, there's some folks who asked me to record it so they could watch it at a later date. Uh, so I want to try and keep this brief, uh, and uh, Eric, if you can throw up the first slide. So I want to do basically the whys, the hows, the, the what's of going to two services. In May, our, our church council met. We've been talking about this for a long time, and I want to just kind of walk through what that process has looked like. The, the, the goal of this is that you leave more informed so you understand decisions, why they're happening, and how they're going to be happening. But everything's still wet cement. So if you have a good idea or an, a suggestion or a concern, you bring those to Rod and myself and we can tweak. That's why we're doing this now and not saying, hey, next week we're changing this. This isn't trying to force anything. This is the way we feel the Lord is leading us at this, at this season. Uh, so why, why are we looking at two services? Um, our average attendance has been well beyond the 80% rule. Now, some of you have never heard of something called the 80% rule, but the 80% rule means that when you get to about 80% capacity, people start to feel like there's no room for them. We have well exceeded that at times. Um, 280 uh, total attendance is about our 80%. That's where we start to fill up on parking spots, kids ministry, and adults. That's usually about 225 adults in the sanctuary and 60 plus kids plus volunteers in the back. We have been over 280 in attendance 10 out of the last 14 Sundays. So for 10 out of the last 14 Sundays, we've been over the 80% rule and that includes in May and June when we should be, when we have historically never even come close to that in the summer attendance. Um, at, 80 per, at 280, we, uh, parking becomes our biggest choke point. So if you guys are late, you, you know this. Like, you, you've run into that at one point where you kind of drive around the parking lot and you're like, oh. Uh, uh, one Sunday, we had people parking by the dumpster and parking along the, the drive-ins and stuff, and that's fine. If you ever need to do that, go for it. Uh, maybe stay out of lawn if it's been raining, but if it's been super dry, we've got that. Kids ministry becomes the next area of concern. There was a Sunday a couple uh, months ago that we had 90 kids back in kids ministry. So we had more children, to the glory of Jesus, like amen, in our kids ministry than the average church attendance on a Sunday morning in America. That's an amazing thing. But as you know, 90 kids can start a revolt like that. And so we had, to, we had to open up another classroom in the side hallway. We had to do some creative things because that's, that's a concern. And then uh, sanctuary seating gets a little full. Um, you've even seen people having to sit in the front few rows some Sundays. That's how you know it's really full. That's, that is like the big concern. If people are in the front row, it, it's really packed in here. And so we've, we've, you've experienced this. Like you've come uh, over the past six months and thought, it, it's getting pretty full in here. What are we going to do? Well, we've been talking and praying about this because we can kind of see the trajectory where the Lord was taking his church here. And so we looked into actually, what would it look like to expand the sanctuary? Stay at one service and, and expand the sanctuary. And after a lot of conversations and thoughts, for, boilerplate, it's just not financially feasible. Um, it's just not financially what I would call wise in this moment. We've got a lot of good information, but we were talking six to nine million dollars, depending on what you did. So no pledge campaign is coming your way. Praise God. This is, uh, we can literally double the size of our sanctuary for free. And the way we do that is we go to two services and poof, you've doubled the size of your sanctuary without any kind of capital campaign. So um, two services allows us to fix all of our problems with little fin financial impact. Um, and we do know that it requires more volunteer labor. We're gonna need a lot more volunteers, specifically in the areas of technology, uh, greeting, communion, and kids ministry is gonna be a huge one. But for the first time since COVID, when we did some two services during that, there's going to be an opportunity for y'all to engage in something called serve one, go to one, where if you're in back with the kids, for example, you don't have to miss service because you can serve one service and attend the other service. So there's an opportunity that I know some of you are like, man, I, I want to make sure I'm fed and I, I'm, I struggle if I'm in the back and that kind of thing. You now have the opportunity to serve one, go to one. And so we're, we're going to definitely be pushing that, and it's an opportunity for people to get plugged in and serve. 
Um, we do understand that fellowship will need uh, to look a little different. We get that. Um, because two, two services, meals will not be the same. We're thinking about that stuff. So I know some people's concerns are naturally like, well, I, I'm going to miss seeing maybe Betty who goes to the first service and Sally who goes to the second service. We understand that those, so we're thinking through that. And how can we do church fellowship events at different times, maybe different church carrying suppers rather than lunches where people can come back, different bowling events and all that good stuff. Essentially what it comes down to is this. We need to make sure there's room for the next you. At some point, you came to Salina first. Some of you were born here. Some of you came matriculated after that. But at some point, there was room for you to come and hopefully experience the love and grace of our Lord and the fellowship of believers and service to the, to the king. And so we don't want to ever get to the point where people walk in and go, there's no place for me. There's no place for my family. And we wouldn't say it, but they would feel like I'm, I'm not welcome here. If you show up to a party and there's no seats at the table, you're just kind of standing around, it's on the guest to make sure that there's seats. And that's what we're looking for. You can go to the next slide, Eric. How are we going to do it? This is, this is our proposed plan. We feel like it's a good one because we got a test run of this during COVID. We actually went to two services during COVID. We were averaging around 150 people during COVID. We've been over 280, 10 out of the, and we'll be over it today, I can kind of see. So some of you are thinking back on our time with COVID and thinking, oh man, like we, we, that was rough. There'd be like 40 people. We're literally double the size and average attendance during that. Our proposal is to put uh, Sunday school at 8 a.m., uh, have first service at 9 a.m., and second service at 10.30 a.m. Um, this is, again, a pretty standard what a lot of churches do that have two services. Um, this is stereotypical, but it tends to be true. Folks that tend to attend Sunday school tend to be earlier risers, and so they, they would prefer Sunday school to be before service. They're starting at 9 and then having that. Um, the big thing is we will have the same exact worship and message for both. It's the same exact service. This is going to be really important because some people will instinctively say, oh, if we're doing two service, let's make one a, a traditional with hymns and a choir. We need to make sure that they're the same service because we need people to go to both services. And if people start having a preference in like, well, I prefer the worship in the second service or Pastor Craig preaches in the first service or Pastor Brad preaches in the second service— it, it splits in a weird way. We want to make sure that the service is the same so that it doesn't really matter what time you come to, 9 a.m., 10.30, you're getting the same experience. Lord willing, um, you're seeing the Spirit move and in, in those kinds of things. Full kids ministry will be available for both services. So we're going to run the line of first kids for both, which is why we need more help. Now, it might look different because if we only have 12 kids in the first service and 55 kids in the second service, We'll plan differently. We'll plan different volunteer needs, but they will get the same heartbeat of what we do, if that makes sense. Okay, you can go to the next one. What do we need for two services? First is prayer. Um, this is a, a wonderful problem that we experience. And, and, I, and I hope that we see that and we give praise and thanks to God. There are not many churches that are growing in America and there are not many churches that are able to go to two services with no financial impact or a pledge campaign that needs to happen or anything like that, that what we need is some more servants, and we need God's grace just guiding us and giving us wisdom. Um, we, when we did two services during COVID, we were trying to keep the ship afloat. Like, uh, that was a rough time for me as a pastor and us as a church. None of us have ever gone through that. Going to two services now is going to feel very different because it's a change in how we operate but it's also an opportunity for us to chase after Christ in a new season, which we're really excited about. And ultimately, what we need is grace. And you're thinking, well, God will give you his grace. No, we actually need grace from y'all. I know God will give us our grace. Sometimes grace doesn't come from the church family, if we're just being honest. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to stub our toe at times. We, we're we're going to learn along the way of how to do two services well, and how to do fellowship well. I don't believe the Lord brought us to this place as a church to do our church harm. And so if there's something that comes up, come talk to Rod. Come talk to myself. Come find Randy or Mike or Kurt and I here, Kevin, or um, grab one of the elders and say, hey, I've got a concern about something. Can I just chat with you for a little bit about that? 
we welcome those conversations, or hey, I've got a suggestion or an idea. I attend a church that did this this way or a fellowship event. We are the body of Christ, so all of our wisdom is in that, and we're just asking for your grace. You can go to that last slide, Eric. Um, so basically, like I said, I wanted to just kind of keep that short, and by God's grace, I actually did. Our perspective date to do this is the first Sunday in September. So it's Labor Day Sunday, which is not the best as far as um, attendance-wise, but it's the best as far as scheduling volunteers goes. If we were to try and switch in the middle of August, it's kind of a nightmare. Um, and we, we don't really need it until that point. But what I'm hoping you're seeing through me talking some numbers, and I know it's numbers and stuff, um, on Mother's Day, we were over 330 people here, and that's in May. Uh, if that was, and at, at Easter, we were well over 400 people. And so these kinds of big higher holidays show you the potential impact, and when that happens, we just don't have room. And so that is really what we're saying. We're saying, Lord, if you're going to keep uh, sending people our way and you're going to keep telling people to plug in here and worship you here and serve you here, then we want to be good stewards of that. Um, I want to open it up to any questions. If you feel like you have a question you want to ask in private, that's totally okay, but I didn't want to squash anything that if you just have a question, concern, or thought. It, it's pretty standard. Um, the one thing I'll say is we were, we were strategic and kind of holding on. There were some times that I thought, boy, we might need to go to two services sooner than this. Um, the reason we didn't is because it is a fairly big shift, and I look at the church a little bit like a cruise ship. I want to take a nice, big, sweeping turn. I want to give you guys all the information. Our church council wanted to have all the stats and figures, wanted to pray through a plan, and to just put out a text that said, hey, next week we're going to two services. We need a bunch of volunteers. Please show up. We were worried that that's turning the cruise ship a little sharp. People hit their head on the walls and, and, and that kind of thing. We feel like this plan was of the Lord, that we were able to talk to you about it. And now we're coming to you in June. This isn't happening until September, Lord willing. And so if we need to retool, rethink, we're missing something, we have a blind spot, we're asking you to come talk to us and help us shape this plan. This is our church. Christ is the head pastor. And so we're trying to do this well together. But I appreciate your guys' grace uh, for this, and I appreciate your prayers for this. Our staff is really excited but I pray, ask that you would pray for our staff because ultimately it's the most work on them, the scheduling an entire another service, looking for volunteers. And I really do pray that if you don't serve in our kids' ministry, but you maybe have some of those giftings, that you'd consider it. That you'd say, yeah, you know what? I could do a shift in the nursery because now I can serve one, go to one. Yeah, I could work with the preschoolers. I know I speak for Christina when I will, she's very pregnant and I'll put her up here crying if I need to. I don't want to do that. Uh, but to be honest, here's my challenge to you with the kids' ministry. I really think it's one of the most important things we do. Like discipling of young hearts and minds and you having an impact on children is really, it, it's not child care. They're not just going back there so they're not in here. They're welcome in here. My kids would far prefer to be back there because they're with, they fellowship, they have their own little church, they get a message that's age appropriate, and they get to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. So if you're not serving in kids and you've, you are feeling that right now, that the Lord's like, I'm talk, he's talking to you, maybe just consider it. There are some awesome, awesome kids back there, and they will love you, and they will teach you things about Jesus and need for grace some Sundays, and you will be smiling. But ultimately... When he returns or calls us home, I know all of us want to be saying, Lord, we did as much as we could for your kids. And so 